Hi everyone. Let's take a real look at the new gradient correction tool in PixInsight and see what happens when good gradients go bad. Welcome to SETI Astro. When the gradient correction process first came out, there was a lot of videos that showed it in comparison to Graxpert and uh, most were extremely positive, showing uh, how quick gradient correction was able to correct the gradient and uh, be very similar to Graxpert. And same with myself. Uh, the, the default settings here on gradient correction applied to one image. This is Sharpless 284. Gradient looks well taken care of. And we have our default settings here in Graxpert and we'll uh, run that as well. All right, Graxpert's done running it and it looks very uh, even as well. And if we blink between them, you can see a little difference that the Graxpert one looks softer in the middle and gradient correction actually pulls out uh, more contrast on the nebulosity out here on the edges. And, uh, you know, in, in a situation like this, I would say definite win for gradient correction. Now I do want to take a little harder look at gradient correction. Let's start with documentation. Here is documentation for SBCC. It is very science oriented. There's a lot of math involved. It is well constructed to be a very stable and scientifically based tool to be utilized. I believe PixInsight did an amazing job with SPCC and showing exactly what's going on under the hood and how these items come about and actually do the corrections. Looking at the reference documentation here, for grading correction, there's a description of the parameters with words, and then it jumps into examples of how to tweak those sliders in order to achieve gradient correction. There's no discussion of what's going on under the hood, what algorithms are used, no math, no show the corrected gradient option. It is very unlike Pix Insight to have a tool like this uh, without the underlying actual science and math behind it, such that professionals could utilize this tool and have uh, it be of a level that they could utilize in the scientific literature. Here are some recent data I've been taking on M81 and 82. Uh, unfortunately, I do have a lot of cloudy nights and I haven't been able to finish it, but I did finish the red channel data. The gradient here doesn't look too bad. It's obviously darker at the bottom and brighter at the top, and it looks like maybe some flat field overcorrecting in the middle. I thought this was going to be a slam dunk for the gradient correction tool. So just at the default settings and applying it, rerunning STF, it didn't do that great. There's still this uh, big bright streak here at the bottom, very dark in the middle, very bright at the top. So what I did next was go ahead and turn on automatic convergence, see if that would help. And at the same time, I told to generate the protection masks so we could actually see what it's protecting in the image as it's uh, trying to correct the gradient. Now it's done, you can see in the background here, it's still very uh, bright at the top, and we've got the streak, and these masks are very, very interesting. The first one protected the corners, which was gradient and needed to remove. The next one now is protecting almost the entire top. Again, that was stuff that needed to correct it. Here's the third mask, and you can see it's just marching down and protecting more and more of the actual gradient that we needed correcting. So the next item I did was uh, turn off structure protection. Uh, obviously that wasn't helping us at all. It was protecting the gradient. 
and we'll just run it now without that in there. That helped, uh, but now we have some dark halos around these galaxies, and there's still a little bit of this uh, gradient at the bottom in, I don't know, blobby shapes throughout. The thing to do with that, uh, I then reduce the scale and the smoothness, so it should uh, be more aggressive at those sharper gradients. That definitely helped take out those sharper gradients, and now we're left with uh, a little bit of darkness around the, the galaxy still. So to help with that, I increased the high threshold. That's better. There's still a, a little bit of this overcorrecting here, so I probably increased it too much. And the final bit, I uh, adjusted that down a, a, a little bit. And here's where it was left with. So here's our gradient correction. Now let's go ahead and pull up a clone. And we'll go ahead and just run Graxpert on its default settings of smoothness zero, we'll replace the image. And when Graxbird is finished, it automatically applies an STF. And now we can blink between the two. So here is the one with all the trial and error with grading correction. And there's Graxbird. Graxbird has brighter patches in the middle and the STF was able to be stronger, which is resulting in what looks like brighter galaxies. It's really just stretching it harder. And with the gradient correction, it is a lot flatter across the whole uh, st structure of the image, but near the galaxy, there is still a little bit of that darkness, but there's the darkness in the Graxpert one as well. So now that leads us with a question. We did a lot of trial and error with gradient correction to come up with this final image. We let an AI algorithm just guess at the gradient and remove it through Graxpert. There is as much guesswork now with gradient correction as there would be an AI doing it in Graxpert. And more importantly, and everybody needs to think about this in their own images, we don't know what the true background is supposed to be. Is it this flatter one that we got with gradient correction? Is it this one with some of the structure in the background we can see that Graxpert left in the image? The only true way we'd ever determine that is when PixInsight finishes their multi-scale all-sky reference survey or their Mars project where they're gonna be able to use multi-scale gradient removal and give us a true gradient correction tool. So my two cents on this is gradient correction is not fully developed. The documentation does not support it. It is great for some images like my Sharpless 284. It was quick and it was done. Other images, you may have to do a lot of trial and error with all these various sliders just in an attempt to get what may be very similar to using DBE or Graxpert and letting it run via that. It seems like gradient correction is a tool to deal with large scale smooth gradients that may arise after the Mars gradient project removes the majority of the gradient and you're left with potentially some amount of residual gradient that the gradient correction tool can then quickly and easily get rid of. But until we have the Mars project implemented within PixInsight, I think we're all still left with this guessing game as to what the true background is. 
Is it this one from Graxpert that it left in? Is it this smoother one from Gradient Correction? That's just my thoughts on it. And again, trial and error with these sliders feels just as, as much guesswork as anything else. And that is really not, in my mind, up to the scientific method that PIX Insight should have in their tools. I hope you liked the video. Uh, it was a little bit of a, of a rant and I apologize for that, but I really want everybody to understand what we're seeing with these tools. Please comment, like, and subscribe.